My name is Michael Johns. Uh, I am the nephew of the late Norman Johns, who was the uh, last person in the family to run the ferry. Prior to that was his father, Frederick Johns, who was known as Pop Johns. And his father was uh, Dickie Johns, and he was uh, known as uh, Low Water Dick. The one before that, which had been his father, was called Daddy Johns. So they were going back into about 18, 1870, somewhere around about there it started off. Well, there's a picture of my great-grandfather Dickie Johns, who's Low Water Dick we're talking about. Whenever the tide went out, he always used to leave his boat moored on the beach in the right position so that it, it was always afloat and he could always get to it. So if a train come in at, um, and, uh, say, 10 o'clock in the evening and the tide had gone out, um, say, uh, four hours, we can imagine the water would be so far down off the beach well he would have his boat just put ready for the, for the passengers to uh, be able to get into his boat he knew exactly where to leave his boat moored and then he could get across the other side and drop off his passengers and he knew exactly where the deep water was in the channel at any state of tide and he used to row that he never used to sail it I always remember being um, a boy um, in uh, we used to love diving off the end of the pier and uh, we used to, as the ferry used to come in so we would dive bomb and splash the passengers and I can re remember um, my uncle and my grandfather going to my father complaining because he could get to my father and complain about me uh, doing this dive bombing off the end of the quay and splashing all his passengers but the rest of them, they had a job to catch the other local lads. I do remember him catching older one or two and boxing their ears over it once or twice. I met Mary, my wife, Steer, she was called, and uh, she had a grandfather called Wolfie Steer, who uh, was a farmer at Fullencott Farm in Insto. Um, and he used to go down on the on the quay to catch the ferry across and back in them days we're talking about in the uh, probably uh, late 40s just after the war and uh, Wolfie Steer wanted to go across and sell his wares to Appledore eggs, cream, potatoes, rabbits, whatever he got to make a few bob and uh, when they, the tide was, um, it was about halfway out at the time, so he had to walk around and go down on the beach and jump aboard the ferry boat, and it was my grandfather who was going to be taking him across. And uh, for some unknown reason, they had a dispute on the beach, and I, I think there was fisticuffs, and uh, they were calling each other horrible names, and uh, which I can't mention, but you can imagine. And um, then when Mary and I, we'd heard this story, and then when we got married in 1969, they were both alive still, and uh, we knew we had to invite them both to the wedding. Uh, briefly, they, my grandfather had mentioned it to me, uh, about uh, Mary's grandfather and uh, he, he wasn't very pleasant about it and, and vice versa Mary's granddad had mentioned it to her and he, he didn't think much of my grandfather either still right up to the day of when we got married and so we were a little bit worried about having them both to the wedding but anyway bless him the both of them I said they both turned up stood in the in the photographs and uh, uh, they uh, sh shook hands and, and all was forgiven. 